uh, just because it keeps me in the Word, you know, and doing it for nothing, you know, it's a, ha a habit, and it's actually a labor of love. You know what I mean? You know, uh, because no matter what I'm going through during the week, no matter how bad it is, I still have to get in the Word to feed the flock. But when I get in the Word, I can't feed you until I first eat myself. You see that? So I have to eat. I have to feed myself. Sometimes because of what I've gone through during the week. You know what I mean? But then it always nourishes me to the point where I can feed feed the flock. And it keeps me closer to Him. You know? So in the process, of course, I learned to see my need for Him. And that's one of the Beatitudes. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit. You know, those who are spiritually bankrupt. In other words, the blessed are those who see their spiritual need. For theirs is the kingdom of God. That means that you have the kingdom of God accessible to you. Uh, I think that's probably why in times past people feel like, you know, the prayer of the pastor is what I need. You know, only the pastor can pray for me. Uh, uh, those prayers are powerful. It's not necessarily because those prayers are powerful. Uh, but, the, but the pastor is keeping himself open, you know, to the line of communication, you know, so that you can have access to the kingdom. And uh, as we grow together, you know, we have access together. That's why I always ask, you know, oh, we, 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 we want to pray for you at the end of service because we're using that corporate access that we have to get the job done. Amen. Amen. Uh, but it didn't mean to go into all of that. Uh, uh, I'm just glad to be able to do this. This is always a privilege and honor uh, uh, to stand before you and give you the word because, uh, of course, when I give it, I get it. Amen. I get it. I get it again. And uh, it's a place where I get to practice giving it because when I go out somewhere else, it'll be a throwback message, <laughs> you know what I mean, that, uh, uh, that we can feed, feed the flock and I always get more revelation out of it. I guess that's like selfish. So, I, uh, so I'm just going to throw it as, out as my praise report, my testimony, okay? So it won't sound so selfish. I'm getting so much out of this. But uh, uh, thought for today. This is by Hudson Taylor. You must go forward on your knees. <laughs> I like that. That's good. You must go forward on your knees. It sounds like somebody else that sees or recognizes their need for him. Uh, it's the only way you can go forward is when you get on your knees. All right, well, since you have your Bibles with you this morning, I have something to share. Like I said, I don't ever want to stand up here and not have something to share. But uh, uh, since you have your Bibles with you, I'd like for you to stand with me and open to John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, in verse 10. This brings us to our fourth exchange. Our fourth exchange uh, uh, of the atonement, what Jesus did on the cross. There are exchanges that took place. And uh, we're looking at nine exchanges, five deliverances, and where we are on the map right now, we're at the fourth exchange. And I want you to focus your spiritual spotlights uh, down to verse 10. I'm going to start with verse 7 and read into it. Uh, but it says, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10 is where I want you to look at though. It says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I've come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the message you prepared in my heart today for this flock, your people. I pray that you would cause your word to go forth and germinate, that it would prosper in the very thing that you sent it out to prosper in. And we give you praise for the results that your word has on our lives. And we, give you, we love you for it in Jesus' name. Those in agreement said, amen. 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 All right, you may be seated. <coughs> All right, amen. Well, this fourth exchange, this fourth aspect of the exchange is simple. But it's powerful. It's powerful. So what have we dealt with up to this point so far? And I'm going to give you a recap just really quick. You know, uh, uh, we've dealt with, since we're dealing with four, the fourth exchange, uh, uh, we are, uh, we dealt with, number one, Jesus was punished 
that I might be forgiven or that you might be forgiven. He was punished that we might be forgiven, number one. Number two, uh, uh, Jesus was wounded so that I can be healed. I am healed because of his wounds. You're healed because of his wounds. He did that so that we might be healed. We can receive that. The second, or the third thing is Jesus became sin so that, well, became sin with our sinfulness. I need to add that to it. Jesus became sin with our sinfulness so that we might be made righteous with his righteousness. And remember, it was our sin that took him to hell, but it was his righteousness that brought him out. And as he came out, he was still our representative going in, coming out. So now he's our representative of righteousness. We stand with him just as righteous as he is. All right? Uh, by the fact that he's out, we've been made righteous. So Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. Jesus was wounded that we might be healed. Jesus became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In him. So that brings us to the fourth exchange, which is simple, but it's powerful. Uh, uh, the fourth aspect, you want to write this down. i got three PowerPoints for you, and I'm going to start early with, uh, with the PowerPoints. Write this down as your first one. Jesus died our death that we might share his life. Okay? Jesus died our death that we might share his life. And we're going to expound on that so that it'll make more sense to you. And uh, Jesus, in, 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 I pray that Jesus becomes more precious to you in light of what we're about to learn. Uh, and so far up to this point, I hope that you've gotten a, a more richer grasp of, of, of Jesus and what his accomplishments were on our behalf because that means that you can take advantage of it. But remember, it was done so that you could make that exchange as needed. As needed. All right? So Jesus died our death that we might share his life. So for your notes, for those of you who are taking notes today, life in place of death. That's what we're looking at today. Life in place of death. Amen. That's the fourth exchange that's simple but yet powerful. And we'll see why it's powerful here in just a second. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I do tend to, uh, uh, you know, I really gain a lot from these studies. And, I'm, I, you know, I, I gain so much when I share it. And uh, I do want to leave room for prayer at the end of this message, too. Just put this on hold for a quick minute. Those of you who may have to leave early, I just want to give you this disclaimer. Feel free to go uh, and, and, you know, do what you have to do. Get what you need uh, uh, before you go. But, 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 but uh, for those who need prayer, who are requesting prayer, or who have need of prayer, I would like to minister to you because we're teaching on the exchange. I want you to, I, I want to raise your faith level through the hearing of the word so that you can make that exchange as needed. You see that? Uh, and, and we dealt with all of these other aspects so far. Uh, some of you may, might need to be forgiven. Some of you might need to be healed. And uh, when we're talking about healed or being healed, uh, we're not just talking about physical healing. Is uh, uh, I, I would say not just merely physical healing. Uh, uh, you got healing for the soul as well. Uh, so if the Holy Spirit uh, uh, throws light on your need, your area of need, I'm going to give you the opportunity at the end of the message to come forward and we'll just sit on the pew up here and I'll come lay hands on you and pray for you. I'll pray you don't have to share what the need is, uh, but I do want you to make the exchange uh, because when the Holy Spirit shows you what the need is, this is the whole point. Uh, it's so that you can make the exchange uh, from the atonement that was that was uh, uh, done for us. Amen. Amen. Uh, and as we pray, uh, if you have to leave, uh, just be in a spirit of prayer for those who are receiving ministry. Okay? Uh, I just want to throw, throw that out. But Jesus died our death that we might share in his life. So what does that mean exactly? Well, it cost Jesus his life to make life available to us. See, we're going to look at this from an aspect that you've never probably never seen it from before. And uh, I hope that it becomes brand new to you. As we said before, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature and old things are passed away. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm building on the fact that all things are become new. See, I don't want you to hear a message and feel like, a, 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 you know, like I don't want the devil to to uh, fool you into thinking like, well, I already know about life and life more abundantly, you know, so that's an old message. But if you see it from another angle, you know, uh, then it becomes a, a, a new truth from the old. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, God, God wants you to, to have fresh revelation because it's that revelation that you gain on the inside that gives you the victory on the outside. Amen. Amen. Uh, when you start seeing things with inside eyes, it, it produces a different kind of behavior that Satan isn't ready to deal with. You know, and it also gives you access to your inheritance. See, sometimes you think that you have to die and go to heaven before you can experience your, your, your inheritance. When God all along intends for you to experience it here on earth. Amen. So I want to just basically give you some pointers and help raise your faith so that you can exceed, receive what you need while you're here in time. Uh, while you're here before you get to heaven. All right. John 10, 10. I want to look at this for a minute. And there's going to be another scripture to, to uh, tack on to the end of that. Uh, and and uh, uh, I want to point out a few things for us. See, Jesus... Uh, uh, did what he did so that we could share his life. He died our debt. And when he died our debt, basically in costing his life, it made life available to us that he could give it to us. Uh, in his death, he made life available to us. Look at this again in John 10.10. 10. He says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Now, here's some things that are noteworthy about this passage right here, leading into the next one. Uh, number one, Jesus didn't say how he was going to accomplish that. All he said was, I've come that you might have life. I've come that you might have life, and not just have life, but have it more abundantly. But he didn't say how he was going to do it or how he was going to accomplish that. You recall before I said that when you look at the four Gospels, you're looking at what Jesus came to do, but it's not giving you necessarily why he came to do it. Not until you get to the letters of the uh, New Testament. Paul, he gives us what's called the Pauline Revelation. He reveals to us why Jesus did what he did. You see that? So we're going to look at the Pauline Revelation in light of what Jesus came to do. He said he came to give us life. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Number one, he didn't say how he was going to do it or how he was going to accomplish it. But also I want you to note this, that there's a big difference between what Jesus gives us and what we deserve. Mm. All right? Big difference. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 23. With that being said, Romans 6, verse 23. When you get there, say, I got it. All right? Now here's some pages turning. You got it? All right. And while some are still on their way, Romans 6.23 says this, For the wages of sin is death. Everybody say wages. 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 For the wages of sin is death. But the, the gift of God is eternal life. Everybody say gift. Yeah. Yeah. gift. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. He didn't just stop there and say that the gift of God is eternal life. He says the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. All right? Qualifier. In Christ Jesus. Now note, there is a deliberate contrast between wages and the free gift. Did you notice that in that verse? A contrast, and it's a deliberate contrast at that. What are wages? Did anybody ever bother to ask that question? What are wages? Well, wages are what we have earned for what we have done. That's what wages are. Wages are what you've earned for what you've done. Well, if that's the case, then what is receiving wages? Let's go a little deeper. Well, what receiving wages are, in, in one simple term, receiving wages would be justice. Mm -hmm. You ever thought of it like that? Mm -hmm. Justice. So here's a little insight for you. If receiving wages is justice, then it would be foolish in light of what we just looked at right now to say that all I want is justice. See that? Because remember, the wages of sin is death. You see? Here, write this down. Here's your second PowerPoint. See, justice demands that you receive your wages and your wages are death. See that? Justice demands that you receive your wages. See, anybody, anybody got a job? 
comes out. You get a received paycheck. Yeah. See, see, you work hard for that paycheck, don't you? You put in, you probably trade, if you're not on salary, you probably trade hours for dollars. You trade hours for dollars, right? Uh, uh, and when you put in a certain amount of hours, you expect a certain amount of dollars. <laughs> if you put in a certain amount of hours and don't get the expected wages, you start having a problem. You got a problem because you demand that you get paid what you deserve. You know, that's justice. You see? And consequently, on the other side, the flip side of that, if you don't put in, if you've been taking time off a lot, you know, you've only gotten so many hours due to your own whatever, you know what I mean, where you know that the check is going to look funny. <laughs> you know, you know, oh man, I know I'm probably, I'll be lucky if I make $13 on this paycheck. You can't pay a bill with that because of the hours that you put in. And when you get that $13, you don't, you don't complain. You know what I mean? Because that's what you earned. You earned it. And justice sees to it that you get what you've earned. You see, otherwise you start talking to corporate office and, you know what I mean, home oh, office, hey, what's going on with this chick right here? I put, you know, you start demanding justice. From God's perspective, though, whenever you're looking at it from God's perspective, it's foolish to demand justice. Because what we've earned for what we've done, we deserve death, all of us. Mm -hmm. Even if you've never physically done anything bad, you know, we've all fallen in, 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 in some way or another. Like we said, the Ten Commandments, see, I'm always laughing when people say that I follow, I just follow the Ten Commandments. <laughs> That's impossible. Because you know, see, the Ten Commandments wasn't given for you to follow. It was given to show you that you couldn't follow it. Hmm. <laughs> you see that? Uh, I can't follow the Ten Commandments. It's simple, you know what I mean, but it's difficult. It's really, in fact, it's impossible. I can't follow it. Uh, 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 it's impossible because of sin, because of what Adam did. You know, what he did, I inherited his sin nature, which is satanic, and I, I automatically want to do what I don't want to do in my body, in my members. You see that? Uh, that's what the law reveals. Uh, thou shalt not kill. Okay, good. Okay. Thou shalt not shalt not steal. Okay, so, so people have never killed or still stolen anything in their life. And going on down the list, you know what I mean? These are physical sins. Yeah. And a lot of people have never done those physical sins. So they can probably say, without realizing, they say, well, I'm just following the Ten Commandments. But see, it's that last one that gets all of us. Thou shalt not covet. Everybody say covet. 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 What does covet mean? It means to desire. It means to want to. In other words, uh, you might not have done these first nine, but if you've ever wanted to, now you've moved into a whole new area of sin. Mm -hmm. It's the sin of motive. Mm -hmm. You see that? So all of us have fallen in the sin of motive. I never killed anybody, but I, I wanted to. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, if you've ever hated somebody in your heart, you've already murdered them. You see that? If you lust for the wrong things, you know what I mean? You're guilty. You're guilty because you've, you, you've wanted the wrong things. But see, here's the good news. The good news, I don't want to leave you in that. You know, that's dreary, it's drab, but it's spiritual too. It's spiritual in that, that it shows us our sin. It shows us what we deserve. You know, if any of us have broken any one of those laws, whether it be the sin of action or the sin of motive, we deserve death. You see that? Mm -hmm. So in that regard, the law is good. The Ten Commandments is good because it shows me that I can't keep it. And it brings me to the end of myself. See, and when I come to the end of myself, that's when I come to the beginning of Jesus. See, he's my new law now. You know, so when I follow him who kept the law perfectly, you know, then I, I end up keeping the law. And here's why. You know, see, the reason why Jesus kept the law perfectly wasn't just because he was the son of God, but it was because he followed love. You see that? In fact, God is love, and love himself became flesh and blood in Jesus and fulfilled all of the law as us and for us. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You see that? And since he's followed the law, he's our new law that we follow now, and he tells us, or he commands us as our new Lord to love. Isn't that a coincidence? He tells us to love. See, love is the remedy of the law. Love is what the law was after all along. See, we thought that the law was ten different things because it looks different on the outside. But on the inside, it's all the same. It's after love. You see that? It's just ten different colored wrappers that it comes in. But underneath, it's all chocolate. You see that? 
Love is all chocolate. And love is the remedy because, see, when I love you now, because the love of God has been shared abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit, that's supernatural. Because I love you now, I no longer want to kill you. <laughs> you see that? He remedies the sin of motive uh, and gives us a new law to follow. So as we follow him, we're keeping the law without even thinking about it. You see that? So don't even think about the law no more. Think about love. Because uh, as a new covenant believer, uh, you have a new law to follow. Amen. And that new law is love. And if you follow that, you've kept all of the old. So now let's move on to life now. Jesus said that I come that you might have life and that you would have it more abundantly. So once you've received it, you know, now you have it to benefit from. And as you are discipled, you learn how to use it, how to implement it, or how to, to work it out in your, in your own life so that it would be more abundantly. Jesus, or I should say justice, demands that you receive your wages, and your wages are death. Uh, 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 that's what the wages are. Let me give you an illustration of, of what I'm talking about. There was a woman who went to a portrait studio to have her picture taken. After they took the picture and she, she, the proofs were ready, to, she came to look at the proofs and she didn't like what she saw. <laughs> so she said, she said, these pictures don't do me justice. <laughs> the photographer, he said something clever. He said, Madam, you don't need justice, you need mercy. <laughs> <laughs> So that brings us to our third PowerPoint. We don't need justice. We need mercy. Amen. Amen. Yes. See, justice demands that you receive your wages and your wages are death. Don't demand it. Rather, we have the contrast. Wages of sin and death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, he said that you, need, you don't need justice, you need mercy. That's what we need. We need mercy. But question, what is mercy? Glad you asked. Mercy. Mercy is the alternative to justice. That's what mercy is. It's the alternative to justice. So make note of this, that if you decline your wages, then you qualify to receive the free, unearned gift of eternal life. Did you get that? If you decline your wages, then you qualify to receive the free, unearned gift of eternal life. Now, why is eternal life even available? Why is it? Uh, it's because Jesus accepted the wages of sin that were due to us by receiving them in himself. You see that? When he did that, that made eternal life available to us. That makes it available to us. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we will receive it. He did that. He received that in our place. I want you to flip over to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. When you get that clear, you throw. <laughs> All right. It says, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. By the grace of God, he might taste death. The death of everyone. See, because Jesus accepted the ways of sin that were due to us, he received them in our place. He tasted death on our behalf. He tasted death for everyone, I'm going to conclude with this. Uh, see, Jesus who tasted death on our behalf, uh, on behalf of not just me, but every descendant of Adam, he tasted death. Uh, he was the last Adam, and he was the second man, this Jesus, who did this for us. Jesus who tasted death on our behalf of every descendant of Adam, he was the last Adam, and he was the second man. We've looked at this before, but in light of what we're, what we're dealing with now, I want you to look at 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. I want you to see something, and, 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 and there's a, a, a really strong truth to pull from here. 
uh, that I believe should throw some light on the exchange that we have with him. 1 Corinthians 15, look at verse 45. He says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Notice he didn't call him the second Adam, but he called him the last Adam. The last Adam. I want to make a, a, a side note on the last Adam title that Jesus has. He's not called the second Adam uh, uh, in that he's the last Adam. You could even put it like this. As the last Adam... He's also, he, was, he was also before the first Adam. All right? As the last Adam, he was before the first Adam. Here's what I mean. Which came first? This Sunday or last Sunday? You see that? So last Sunday was here before this Sunday. This Sunday. The last Adam, Jesus, is preeminent before. He came before the, the first Adam. You see that? As the last Adam. But also... As the last Adam, uh, he's also the one to take the place of all of first Adam. I'll show that, show you what that I mean by that in a minute. But skip down to verse forty-seven. He says the first man was of the earth, talking about Adam, made of dust. <coughs> Here he says the second man is the Lord from heaven. Now here he's not talking about being the last Adam. He's talking about being the second man. That's another title. And with that, that other title comes another responsibility, another role that he plays. He played one role as the last Adam, and he plays another role as the second man. Are you getting this? Make sense? See, Jesus who takes death, death on our behalf of every, on behalf of every descendant of Adam, was the last Adam and the second man. Now, what does that mean as it relates to this life that we're to receive? Well, as the last Adam... What Jesus did was he terminated the evil inheritance that was due to Adam and his descendants. You see that? He terminated it in himself. Everybody after Adam had an evil inheritance. And Jesus comes along as our last Adam in order to take all of what was due to Adam and his descendants. All the penalty that was due. He took all of that as the last Adam and did away with it. He terminated it. So now the penalty is no longer there. Do you see that? As the last Adam. The penalty is no longer there. Uh, if you can see that. Uh, he terminated all of those due to the last Adam. And as the second man, he's raised from the dead. And raised from the dead, not just by himself, but he's raised from the dead as the head of a new race of humans. Does that make sense? He's the head of a new race of human being. It's amazing. It's genius what God did in Adam. Uh, without getting into it real heavy, you know, you got some pre-Adamites uh, that God had in the first flood, which was Lucifer's flood. It wiped out the whole, everything, human race. Nothing survived. So he starts all over with the Adam that we know now in Genesis. He starts over with him, and then he tells him, he gives him dominion over the earth, and he tells him to replenish the earth. Now, for him to replenish it means that it must have been replenished before. You see that? So that's a hint that there were some pre-Adamites before that. And that also lets us know why Satan was in the garden when God made this, the, the Adam that we know. Uh, Satan was in the garden because this is where his rule or domain was before he fell. Keep that in mind. Okay? Lucifer. He fell from heaven, not because he started in heaven. He fell from heaven because he started on earth. Does that make sense? Uh, 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 if you look at Isaiah 14, when it talks about uh, uh, the five I wills of Satan, he says, I will do these things, and he will exalt his throne. He's talking about exalting, going up. Then he was cast down. You see that? Well, when he went up, before he went up, he was good. Iniquity, iniquity was found in his heart. Now he's trying to go up and overtake God's throne. He gets kicked back down to earth. And then God starts all over with Adam, as we know, in, in Genesis. He starts all over. See, when the earth was void and formless and darkness covered the face of the deep, that was a flood. That wasn't Noah's flood, though. That was Lucifer's flood. And it wiped out everything, mankind included. 
So God starts over with a new man in Adam, and that man fails. <laughs> you see? Now we have the last Adam, and that's Jesus. And he's the right, he's, he's the second man in his resurrection, and he that makes him the head of a new race of human beings. That's why when you place your faith in Jesus, it says that you're a new creature now. You're a new creation, another version puts it. In other words, you're something that never existed before. You see that? You are now a Christ inside person in him. A new creature. And he's the head. We are the body. We follow. And he's, he's got an army of us. Amen. Amen. And it's still growing to this day. Uh, this is the life uh, that he came to give us. Uh, but the only way he could make it available was by taking the death for us. Uh, so that we could re receive that life. If you haven't received that life today, I want to invite you up to receive that life. Uh, so that you can make that exchange and come sit right here. Uh, at the at the at the at this pew right here, and uh, on either side, and we will pray for you if you need healing for your body. Uh, the exchange is made available at the atonement. Uh, he was wounded so that you could receive healing. If you need healing for your body, spirit, soul, or body, it doesn't matter. Come forward, and you can receive healing for, for that. If there's forgiveness that you need, you know he was punished so that you could be forgiven. And if you, if you realize that already, I also want to make this appeal to you. Uh, you might be forgiven and you're aware of that, but there's somebody that you're holding in unforgiveness. Uh, you need to release that person right now. Release those people. Uh, you need to come forward right now and receive your exchange so that you can be set free. That's the only way you'll experience the life more abundantly that he has for you. Amen. You're robbing yourself of, of life more abundantly by holding it against whoever did you wrong. Uh, whatever they did, it can't be worse than what you did to Jesus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Remember, your sin is what put him on the cross. And he forgave you. He took the wages so that you could have his life. So the least you can do is forgive those who sinned against you. Amen? Amen. Uh, if you want to come forward, you can come forward and receive prayer. Uh, I want to pray for those who are watching my YouTube right now. Uh, you can't come forward and receive prayer, but you can receive prayer from where you are. And uh, if, you, if you have any kind of need, you can lay hands on yourself wherever you have the need and receive healing uh, because it's been made available. Remember, God bends over backwards to meet you where you are. Uh, and it doesn't matter how strange it looks or feels. If you need healing and you need some, there's nobody to lay hands on you, lay hands on yourself Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And believe the prayer of faith so that you can receive the healing that he's given to you. So I'm going to pray for you right now, and as I do, if you, if those who want to receive prayer, you can come forward, and I'll lay hands on you after I, I pray for those on YouTube and those who are here now. Amen. 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 Father God, as Jack comes forward, you know I'm going to be praying for everybody. Who is. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today's message. I thank you that you've made the exchange, Lord Jesus, that you've taken the death that I deserve, that I might receive your life, that I could share. In your life, in your glory, we give you praise for that, Father. I thank you for those who are who are in earshot of this message, who see their need, Father. I pray that by your Spirit you would meet them where they are, that you would help them to release, give them the grace to release those who who who've sinned against us, who've wronged us in any kind of way. We release them by faith right now. I release them by faith, and I release them with those who who are needing that as we pray. We release them by faith right now. We receive forgiveness on their behalf. We receive our forgiveness as well, Father. We thank you for cleansing us and relieving us of that debt. Uh, uh, we, we just thank you for a new life in Jesus. We pray that you cause that life to manifest in abundant life. So we, could, we, would be out, we would be able to reach out to those who have need of you, Father. Thank you for, for the exchange that we would be better servants in your kingdom. Uh, we give you praise for it all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.